Good morning. All right, so the bell has rung, so let's get started. Today we're going to be walking into the beginning of our new unit. We're going to be here for at least a week or two, um, and we're going to be covering logic. So, all right, so very first thing are the symbols of logic. So let's all start taking notes. This is not gonna be written in any other place. So it's up to you guys to copy this down. If I'm writing it, you're writing it, okay? Um, it would be great if a couple of people would be nice enough to turn on their cameras so that I can actually see if people um, are getting this material. Um, you know, I mean, how would you like it if I uh, taught this way? You know, it really wouldn't be too effective now, would it, really? Um, so it'd be great if a couple people would be so kind and uh, turn on your cameras. Thank you. It really does make a difference. All right. Okay. All right. So the symbols of logic. Just need you to start copying this down. We're going to cover all of it in time. Okay, so there are six symbols that we need to worry about. Okay, and they are, I'm gonna do them one at a time. An arrow means an if then statement. For example, if I wrote A and then an arrow and then a B, I would be saying if A, then B. <laughs> Next is a double headed arrow. And this is written as if and only if. For example, if I wrote A and then a double headed arrow, that would be A if and only if B. Sometimes this is abbreviated. So mathematicians love abbreviations. if with two Fs, if, okay. Okay. The third one, there's six, it looks like a little squiggly negative sign and this is not. It's the negation. And if I wrote, for example, that, that would mean not A. All right. Go ahead and give me a uh, thumbs up when you're done with that, copying all that down. Okay. Okay. We have three more. This 
little carrot symbol, which is above the six on a keyboard. This is and. So if I said P and Q, that's how you would read it. P and Q. And just like this is and, if we flip it upside down, it means or. Is R or S. And the last one looks like three dots in a shape of a triangle. And this means therefore. So if I wrote the triple dot, that would mean therefore M. Now I'm going to give many, many examples of all of these, but right now it's important that we get them copied down. Give me that thumbs up when you're done with these three. Just to kind of summarize, all right, so those are our six symbols of logic. Now let's go through a whole boatload of examples to see how to use them. Basically what you're doing with these is you're substituting. So let's do, all right. So I'm going to make some substitutions. I'm going to let R equal, it is a mammal. And I'm going to let S equal it is a cow. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking sentences and we're going to be substituting these letters and these symbols so that we can write the sentence in an abbreviated symbol form. Okay, so the sentence might start off Okay, so if I gave you this information, these two pieces, these two statements, and then I gave you this sentence, what you're going to do is you're going to turn, you're going to, you're going to look at this sentence and you're going to break it up into its pieces. So I've got an if then involved. So that tells me that I'm going to be using a certain symbol. So look at your notes and find the symbol that tells me about if then and write and tell me what that is. Okay, it's the arrow. Then I look at the pieces that I have and I make those substitutions. 
So it is a cow I've got a, a expression for. So that's S. It is a mammal I've got an expression for, and that's R. So really all you're doing here is you are looking at your sentence and picking out your pieces and substituting them. Kind of like you did in algebra. You know, every time you saw an X, you replaced it with a three, right? That kind of a thing. Like you're just substituting for pieces. Okay. Let's do some ones that are a little more interesting. Okay. So if I wrote Oops. So it, I almost have this sentence already, but it's got a piece in it that's different. And so I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, what symbol and letter should I be using to represent this sentence? Take a look at your list and see if you can find a symbol that I should be using Okay, good. It's the little squiggly line. It's almost kind of like a, it looks like a negative sign, but it's just, you know, squiggly because it's not a real negative sign like you'd use with numbers. Okay. It is not a cow and ca being a cow is S. So that's this, that would be your answer. It is not a cow. Let me ask you, what if we went the other way and I wrote down give me a sentence for that what would that sentence be um would it be it is a cow well what was r uh, oh you put it as a mammal but i've got this symbol in front it is not a mammal yeah this is the negation of r so I look up at R and I say, it's mammal, but it's the negation of it. So it is not a mammal. So I take a look at my sentence and I find out what symbol should I be using. So I look down this thing and I see that I've got an and. The and symbol is that symbol. And now I go ahead and take a look and I see it's a mammal, that's my R. It is a cow, is my S, and that's my answer. Who has absolutely no idea what the heck I'm doing? Does that thumbs up mean that you don't know what I'm doing or you do know what I'm doing? Okay, so all I'm doing is substituting. I'm looking down my list and I'm finding the words that I can substitute in my sentence. So were you late to class? Did you get the six definitions of the symbols? Okay, without the six, yeah, without the six definitions of the symbols, you're, you, you, I'm not surprised you're not, um, you're not following along. Try to get to class on time if possible, because um, 
I start right away, okay? Okay, then keep that list nearby so that you can use them. Okay. All right, let's try another one. So take a few seconds and see if you can find out what symbols and letters you're going to string together to make your answer on this. You're going to have to look at your list of symbols to find out what symbol to put in between your letters. I like it, Kimberly, nice answer. So, not a mammal. Oops. Not a mammal would be the negation of R, so not R. Or, looks like a little V. It is not a cow, is not S. Does that make sense? Raise your raise your hand if you're cool with what uh, what we did. Or you know, little hand, little the little blue hand raise or thumbs up. Okay. All right. So generally, we're feeling okay. All right. All right. Good. I mean, really, you're doing a whole boatload of substitution. You're just doing it with sentences and words. Okay. All right, let's do some little ones that are maybe a little different. Switch it up a little bit. Okay. So if I gave you that, now your job when you get your, when you get these problems is to either go from sentences into symbols or to go from symbols into sentences. It just depends upon what's given to you uh, and what you're asked for, okay? So I've got a double-headed arrow which tells me that I've got a if then statement. And there now you I have P, which is it is summer, and then I have Q, it is hot, so I just substitute those in. So the arrow gave me the if then, and the P and the Q just got dropped in place. Okay. 
what might that be? I got still got some hands raised. Uh, do you guys have questions, or they just still raised from the last one? Brenda, Cynthia, Michelle, do you guys have questions? You have your hands raised. So let's take a look at this the, at these symbols here and how could I turn that into a sentence? Okay, so I've got a cue. It is hot. And this triple dot was the word therefore. And then I have a P, it is summer. Kind of ran out of room there. I hope you're okay. Good, good, a lot of good answers. Excellent, okay, let's keep going. So what would that be? Okay, so if this is the negation, you're making something negative. If the regular G is I go to Unity Reed High School, this would be, it is not true. You know, no, I do not go to your Unity Reed High School. I do not go to Unity Reed High School. Okay, now I'm going to ask you an unusual question. What would that be? You know, Omar, you're uh, you're, you're pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't, don't go to Unity Reed High School, but that's kind of awkward to say, but you're not wrong, but that's not the way we want to write our answer. So let's think about it this way. If this is, I, it is, I do not go to Unity Reed High School, then I'm negating it again. So it's the negation of this. So you would go to Unity Reed High School. Think about it like this. Um, so a negative x would be negative three, right? And then a negative negative x equals three. 
So a negative, a double negative, that's what we call this. This is called a double negative. A double negative cancels itself out to give you the original thing back again. So an example of that that we probably hear more often than you imagine would be Think about that sentence. What are they really saying when they say that? When you hear that on the sidewalk, what does that mean? And somebody turns to you and says, I'm not doing nothing. Anybody want to think about it? Yeah, they are actually doing something. So what they're probably trying to tell you is like, I'm just sitting here minding my own business. I got nothing going on. Everything's kind of chill. But when you say what's up, they say, I'm not doing nothing. Well, that means you are doing something, which is not really what they wanted to say. Okay, so when you, when you hear this, you know, laugh quietly inside your mind because what they're saying is, hey, I really am doing something. You know, sometimes you'll, uh, you know, you walk up to somebody and you'll say like, hey, did you do that? Or, you know, what, you know, you know, somebody yells at you for maybe accusing you of doing something. And if you say, I'm not doing nothing, well, congratulations, you just confessed. Okay, so I don't think that this is what you want to say. Um, okay, so. Let's do more paper. All right, let's do those. All right. Um, let's talk about the biconditional. That's the double headed arrow. That's the name of the bike. That's the name of that symbol is the biconditional. Okay. In the biconditional, it's a double headed arrow because the arrow goes in both directions. Okay, so for example, So if I wrote that, that would say, I eat popcorn. If and only if I watch TV. So let's think about that for a second. You eat popcorn if you're watching TV. And you eat popcorn only if you're watching TV. So the only time that you eat popcorn is when you're sitting in front of that TV set. And every time you sit in front of that TV set, you eat popcorn. The two of them happen at the same time. They happen simultaneously. So 
So I'm never going to see you with popcorn in your hand unless you're in front of that television set. And I will never see you in front of that television set without popcorn in your hand. The two happen hand in hand, okay? Okay. So, since they happen at the same time, the order of this doesn't matter because you're, you said to me that they happen at the same time. So I could say, is equal to it's kind of like saying i'm awake if and only if i'm not sleeping and i'm not sleeping if and only if i'm awake they happen at the same time they mean the same thing in a sense okay they are equivalent so this is the only one that you're going to be able to flip back and forth you can also do it with and or or, but you can't do it with the one-headed arrow. We'll talk about that in the uh, next class. One second. Okay. All right. So let's just do some more examples. Um, okay. How are we all doing? Does this still making sense? I mean, are we still okay with all this? Thumbs? Cool. Have I lost anybody? All right. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm just going to give you guys some practice, a little, couple of extra problems before we go any further. I want to make sure that we're all kind of feeling okay about this because this is going to be this is going to be your homework today okay all right so let's take a look at what we're talking about first thing you should do is kind of read through the sentence and identify the things that you already know. Like you're probably gonna immediately notice that we've got January over here, we got Monday over there. We talk about January and Monday up here. So we're gonna be using these letters. Um, and I've got an or. What else do I notice in this sentence? The not. Yeah, I've got a knot in here and I have to take care of that. I can't ignore it. So I read through it carefully. It is January. Well, I already have a sentence for it is January and there's nothing going on with it. It's just an N. And then I come across my or and my or has a symbol. So the or is the V looking symbol. It's kind of a, it's not a full sized V. It's kind of a short V, like in a, like a lowercase V, but it's got straight sides. Okay. And now I look at the piece that I, I need to be careful about. Okay. I've got, it is not Monday. So I go up and I realize I'm dealing with M, but it's not Monday. So I have to put in the not symbol and say that it's not Monday. So this is kind of the whole idea is that we're, we're taking all of our pieces and we're substituting for the letters and the symbols 
and we're turning this this long sentence into the, just this collection of symbols. Okay. So we're going to look at this. I'm going to give you guys a couple of seconds. You write down on your notes, maybe off in the corner or something, what you think it's going to be, and then we'll check and see if it's right. Okay. So I've got an if then, and that tells me immediately I'm dealing with an arrow. I've got a not Monday. And we saw what that was before. Not Monday means I'm taking the Monday sentence or uh, the, the Monday uh, phrase and making it negative. And so to make it negative, I use the symbol and it's not Monday. And then I've got not January. So I have to take the January and make it a not January. How's that feel? Is that okay? You know, good? Couple thumbs? Yeah, we're doing, I understand. Good. Good, 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 good. All right. I don't want to go too fast here. You know, I don't know you guys too well yet. You know, I'm still trying to figure out how you all work. So if I go too slow or go too fast, um, you know, if you look up in your uh, participants, um, you know, where you have your little hands up and hands down, um, do you guys have a button for go slower or go faster? Do you have that button? Yeah. yeah. Okay, use that. Okay. If if I'm going too slow or if I'm going too fast, tell me. I don't know. I can't tell. All right. Okay. Help me help you, right? Okay. All right. Now I'm going to do something a little different. Okay. New set, new, new phrases here. Okay. So there's something different that I've done here. I'm, I'm, I've put something different in my instructions that you haven't seen yet in instructions. What is different with these substitutions that's new? Yeah, Anthony. By the way, Anthony, do you go by Anthony or do you go by uh, Tony or something like that? Do you guys have the, um, you guys don't have the ability to change your names, do you? No. You know, by the way, do this, okay? If any of you guys go by a nickname or something else, email that to me and tell me because 
I know you, uh, they don't allow me to give you, like, I don't have the option of giving you the right to change your name on your screen. Um, so, Tony, cool. All right. If anybody else goes by a nickname, just email that to tell me and I'll, and I'll make sure that I tr I'll try to call you um, by your nicknames. Okay. So yeah, uh, somebody, a couple of people have pointed out, one of them is a negative statement. This is already negative. Okay. And that's going to matter. All right. So let's talk about this. For example, if I gave you this sentence, So let's go into it, okay? I've got my if then, and the if then is my arrow. Okay, now let's go into this. If it is blue, it is blue. Well, I've got it is blue already, that's S. No changes, no nothing, it's normal. So I just write the S normal. Now, I want it is cold, but I go up here and I've got a sentence that doesn't say that. I've got a sentence that is a not cold. So how am I going to turn a not cold into just cold? This one's trickier. Yeah, I, I, I have the double negative, right? I, so what I want is I want to take something. So if, if we think about this for a second, this is already negative. So I want to undo the negative. So just like when you were dealing with math problems, if I had, uh, you know, if I had, uh, x equals negative three like this x is a negative r is a negative then i could say negative x is equal to just three now hold on i'm going to talk about what you wrote there say caesar is it caesar or cesar caesar or caesar uh it's caesar caesar okay sorry thank yeah. you I apologize. Thank you for telling me. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make a negative of this so that it becomes a positive. So I'm going to take my negative sentence and make it positive. So Cesar, I know exactly where you're coming from. If you put two negatives next to one another, like that, just like in algebra class, this is the same thing as that. And the original was a negative. And I don't want a negative. I only want one negative to make it a positive three. Does that kind of make sense? The two negatives spelled out, cancel out to each other. And that would leave me back where I was to begin with. But if I just used one, it would cancel out the negative that I've got and leave me with this. So I can think, think about it like this. Let's say you're sitting, you know, let's say it's a, there's a blizzard going on outdoors, right? It's the middle of winter and there's a blizzard. And somebody walks into your house and says, um, uh, man, it's not cold out. Well, you would turn to them and say, that's not true. It is not true. Think about it this way. It is not true that it is not cold, which is saying, dude, it is cold. Does that make any sense whatsoever? That's kind of a lot to put around your brain. Can I get a couple thumbs on that, even if you're lying to me? <laughs> okay. 
All right. That feels good. Thank you. All right. Cool. All right. Now we're going to do something. Um, we're going to talk back about the if thens again. And these are called the if, well, first of all, the if thens. These are called conditional statements. And there's a little bit of vocabulary in here, and I want to talk about that. You can kind of think about this as time, like something happens first. If this happens, then this happens. We call this part a hypothesis. And after the hypothesis, we have a conclusion. So just like in your science classes, that's probably where you've heard these words, right? Hypothesis and conclusion, you know, in the scientific method, all of that, you know? Well, you don't do the conclusion first, right? You, you think of a hypothesis and then you test it and you gather your data and then you analyze your data and then you make a conclusion, right? But the hypothesis is what happens first and then you have a conclusion. So you can think about this as first and second. This happens, then this happens. So it's kind of like first A, then B, you know? Something happens and then something else happens. So we're gonna talk about this for a few minutes and then we're gonna do a quick little activity just to get some language in there. We cool? Okay, so if, oh, um, wait a minute, I think I lost the slide. No, I didn't, okay. So think about this sentence. If something is a cat, then it is a line. So let's think about this sentence. Is this sentence true? If something is a cat, does that mean that it's a lion? So every cat that's out there is a lion. Well, are you sure? I mean, can you prove me wrong? How would you prove me wrong? I'm pointing to an animal. It's on my TV screen. And I say, hey, look, it's a cat. And then somebody in the other room who's not watching the TV says, then it's a lion, right? Well, maybe... Well, give me an example, Ricardo. Give me something that if, if you showed me a picture of this creature, that this would make this sentence false. Okay, Anthony, there we go. Tony, excuse me, excuse me, Tony. A jaguar, right. A jaguar isn't a lion. Is a jaguar a cat? Isn't a jaguar a cat? There's a question. Okay, so let me ask you this. Let's think about it like a Venn diagram. Which is the bigger group of animals? Cats or lions? Which, which has more animals in it? Should I put this is the cats and these are the lions or these are the, these are the cats and these are the lions? Who's bigger, cats or lions? Think about all of the cats and think about all the lions in the world. How many, I mean, are there more cats than, 
the bigger circle is cats. Okay, let's think about that. And I agree with you. So if it's a cat, then it's a lion. This is a false statement, right? You think that this is false. And my question is, prove it. So in order to prove it, Tony said, well, what about a jaguar? Okay. What he just gave me was something right here. A jaguar belongs to the cat's group, but it doesn't belong to the lion's group. Do you understand? So if something is, so a jaguar is an example of what we call a counter example. That's one word. A counter example makes the statement false. Think about it as something that proves people wrong or proves the statement wrong. Okay. Okay, so let's do an example together. Um, where's my paper? What about if I gave you the sentence, um, if, So think about that sentence for a second. And let me ask you, do you believe that that sentence is always true? Well, if you think that it's not, all, it might be true, right? You know, it's probably true on her birthday, right? But is it always true? Okay, I agree. I got a lot of people saying, no, it's not always true. So what we're going to, what my question is, what you're going to be asked to do is to write down something that would make this not true. So that would mean, well, give me an example. What would be an example that would make this a lie? When would she, when would something like this happen that, oh, okay, Cynthia, it could be her wedding, right, okay. All right, that's a, a wedding gift, exactly. Uh, give me another example, somebody else, give me another example. She could be graduation. Okay, she, or, or Christmas, baby shower, holidays, all of these reasons. Okay, so let's think about this. All right, your, the answer, now I wanna go back to, um, I'm, I'm, Kimberly, I'm gonna talk about what you wrote in just a second, okay? But um, I, if you just said um, her wedding, period, okay? Her wedding, is when she got a gift. So this part is true. But this part was false. That, when, when, when the first part is true and the second part is false, that's your counterexample. 
and a counterexample you have a true thing as a, you have a true hypothesis and you have a false conclusion so let's go back here for a second if it is a cat then it's a lion your hypothesis was she oh, sorry it is a cat but it's a lion is a bad conclusion and the counter example was uh say a tiger or a jaguar or something like that right okay so i'm gonna put a link in the chat box to a padlet and i'm going to share that screen and here's what i want everyone to do i want everyone to go to the padlet and i want you to and in order to put something in so you could just double tap it and then you could put in you know whatever it is that you're going to put in and i'm going to give you some statements and you're going to put in some counter examples okay so here's a sentence if it gives off light then it is a light bulb So think of things that give off light think of things that give off light that don't that aren't light that aren't light bulbs you, i don't need a sentence i need a thing whoever's typing in right now you're giving me a sentence i just need a thing give me a thing that gives off light like a candle a candle is something that gives off light. The first part is true, but it's not a light bulb. The sun, right? What else? Some other things that give off light that aren't light bulbs. A lantern. I think you need an N at the end of that, but that's okay. A lamp good these are all good excellent fire true true fire fire is not a light bulb right but it gives off light a lighter okay <clears throat> pardon me okay these are all good excellent let's do another one okay this next one if the food is hot then it came from the oven or came out of the oven okay so the microwave would be the oven kind of a thing but i mean that would be where it came out of but how about microwaved food or something that came like I want I want the food is hot so give me a food that's hot that didn't come out of an oven so what foods do you cook that don't involve ovens a steak okay good it doesn't come out of the oven it comes off the grill right or rice it comes off the stove cereal is, this, is cereal hot it could be like oatmeal you know, or something like that. Um, what's this one? Burgers, eggs. Yeah, you don't cook eggs in an oven. Soup. You know, these are kinds of things. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put those over here. I like eggs. I like soup. Stir fry. Yeah, you don't put that in an oven. Pancakes. Okay, good. Stew coffee i think some yeah this is coffee um all right good f f e e two e's 
there you go. That's it. Okay, good, good. All right, so these are all good examples. And that's the whole idea. You're looking for something that the first part is true and the second part is false. Let's do one more. Um, okay, well, maybe two more because there's a couple of good ones in here I want to do. Um, if I am in... Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. in geometry class, it is Wednesday. Is it always true? Good. <laughs> because you have geometry class not just on uh, Wednesdays, but you have geometry class on Fridays too, right? So it could be a Friday and you're having geometry class. So I like Fridays. Oh, Monday, we don't even have class. Mr. Ronco? Yeah, what's up? I can't get in there. Did you follow that link in the chat? I can't find it. Oh, hold on. Let me go back to the chat. I don't even know where the heck the chat is. Where is my chat? Here. I'll send it one more time. All right, thank you. See if you can click on that. It's in the chat room. Ami, um, yeah, I love that answer. Uh, Indian stuff food that's really spicy. By the <laughs> way, I, I went to India. I spent a month there. It was fantastic. I loved it. Um, and yes, some of the food, it, like I'm gonna tell you, I will remember yeah, eating really some good. Of those meals. Oh man. I went here too in America. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh it's beautiful. I loved it. Yeah. Um, changed my life. It really did. <laughs> um okay, who was having did it, did did everyone get into the link now? Are we all good with the link? Yes, no, it's good. Good, 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 good. Awesome. Thank you. No worries. All right. Yeah, and it depends upon how you define the word hot, right? You know, are we talking about hot as in, you know, like touch it and it burns your finger or touch it and it burns your tongue? You know, two different kinds of hot. So that's a very good way to think about that. It's very true. I love how, I love how you know, students come up with different ways of looking at problems. Okay, now here's a tricky one. If X is greater than four, then X is less than 10. Think about that carefully before you start dropping answers into the chat. I want a number that's bigger than four. So which this part is true, but this part is false. Like I said, this one's tricky and I haven't put a like on anybody's marking yet because I haven't seen an answer that I like yet. Uh-uh, go back and think about it. Are, all, are any of those numbers, I agree, all those numbers that are up there right now are, are greater than four, except for that one. But I need a number that's bigger than four but this is false. The second part is false. All of the numbers that are up there are less than 10. And that's a problem because the, this part would then be true. Aha, somebody did it. Okay, take a look. I like these answers on the left. 
because all of the answers on this side, on the left-hand side, it is true they are all less than, sorry, they are all greater than four. Okay, so here's the thing. I want you to think of a number that's bigger than four, but is not less than 10. So is a, per, is a good answer. <laughs> See what I mean? Because this number is bigger than four, obviously, and it is not less than 10. It is bigger than 10. You see what I mean? So this one was tricky. Okay, yeah, I like 20, good, it's in there. Yeah, that's right. Okay, you want another one that's tricky? Okay. If X is, is um, less than seven, if X is less than seven, then X is positive. So I want it to be true that it's less than seven. I need numbers less than seven, but I need numbers that are not this. You see why? Yeah, there, there you go, big number, there we go. I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Any number that is negative, okay, or not positive, you could have put in zero, that'll work too, because zero is not positive, but good. Okay. Do we get the idea? First part is true, second part is false. All right, okay. Um, so now I think we're just about out of time. Hold on, one moment. Yeah, we are just about out of time. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, on my Canvas page, there is a, um, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep you around for an extra second. On my Canvas page, there's an assignment, okay? Um, I want everyone to go into the chat box right now. And I'm gonna show, well, first of all, take a look. This is my, um, this attachment right here is your homework. Does everyone see it? Go ahead and download that. That's your homework. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be putting in, I got the symbols right here, okay? And you have your sentences and it gives you P's and Q's and you're gonna write the symbols in these spaces on the right, okay? All right, all of these are pretty easy to put in your, in your, um, in your uh, using your keyboard. You can use the less than or greater than symbols, stuff like that, okay? Mr. Ronco? Yes. How can I use the arrow? Uh, that's the less than or greater than symbols. Oh, okay, thank you. Just do it that way, it's easiest. All right, now, the weird one is this triple dot, okay? The triple dot is, is weird. Here's what I want everyone to do, okay? Go into the chat box right now, and I want you to type this in. This is gonna be weird, but I want everyone to do it. Type in, Two, two, three, four. Type in those numbers. Wait, don't hit enter. Just type in two, two, three, four. 
And then I want you to hit Alt X. Two, two, three, four. And then Alt X. And that's how that you get that symbol. Okay, now, does anybody here have a Mac? It's, uh, you type in 2234, and then you hit Alt and X at the same time. Two two three four and then alt x. Okay, now here's the deal. So you can use this when you're in Word. For all of you who are using PCs and, and laptop, you know, PC laptops or PC computers, it's just what I just showed you. Two two three four alt x. But if anyone here is using a Mac or a MacBook, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to to copy that symbol out of the chat right now and make a new document because doing this symbol in a Mac is a real pain in the butt. So right now, copy and paste that symbol into a document so you can copy and paste it later, okay? Does everyone have that, I, okay? Because you don't wanna have to do it in a Mac. But if you have a PC, you already know how to do it. Two, two, three, four, Alt X. All of my Mac people copy the symbol right now, put it into a document so that you can copy and paste it later. Okay. If everyone's okay, I need you to um, uh, download that document. It's going to be due next class. So I will see you on Friday. Um, and oh yeah, just email. Oh, by the way, once you're done with, with, the, with the document, you have to email it to me. Okay. And remember how you do the name. It's last name, first name, the block, and then the name of the file, which is logic day one homework. So for me, it would be Ronco, Mr. Block one, logic day one homework. Okay. Does everyone know how they're naming the file? They're just putting their, their name, first and last name in block one before the name of the file, and then your email, and then you're saving it and emailing it to me. Are we all good? All right, if you've got the document and you're ready to rock and roll, I will see you on Friday. Turn in your homework. If you have any old homework, please turn that in. I wanna get all the grades into the grade book, okay? All right, have a good day. Bye, I wish you a great day. You too, thank you. Bye. Mr. Uncle? Yes, yes, yes. Before yesterday, I went to the school and I got a laptop from the school. Good. Because I found that it's hard to do it in Mac, like my yeah, homework. Mac's a drag. It's just so yeah. fun. And yeah, yeah, everything so is harder. Yeah, it's so hard. So uh, the ho last homework, I'm going to do it and I'll send it to you today with okay. this homework. That's great, no problem. How can I copy like stuff and paste it? Okay, so the shortcut is you, you see the little window key on the bottom left hand side? Yeah. Okay, let's do this together. You okay. hit the window key, the shift key, and the S key all at the same time. Okay, one second. It Michelle, says draw a shape to create a screen snip. Yeah. Michelle, the answer to your question is yes. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, so when you hit the window, the shift and the S, did the whole screen go black, like gray? Yes. And then and you're gonna says, drag a little yeah. box over something. Yeah. And then go into your document and hit control and V as in Victor. Okay. Control. Super out. Do you have a Yeah, it's pasted, yeah. It's all good? You got it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's what you're gonna do. The links are still on my web page and the document is still on my web page. Um, so you can still open them up and get them and start again, okay? All right. Thank you so much. No problem. I'll talk to you next class. Oh nicely.
Bye -bye. If you have any problems or questions, just email me, okay? All right, thank you. Sure. Bye -bye. Subrat, do you have questions? Subrat, are you okay? All right, I will see you on Friday then, okay? Did you get the homework? Is everything all right? Okay, so um, go ahead and leave the room because I got to get a bunch of my other students to come in for my next class.